when we're investigating fraud and we think about how fraud occurs, what, um, how does that happen? And I'm going to start with, it's called the fraud triangle. Has anybody ever seen the fraud triangle or heard about the fraud triangle before? Okay, well good, then this should, should be new. So, sorry. Make sure you're taping this, Matt. I got it. Okay. Okay, so there we do. We, have a, we do have a triangle here. So there's really, a, you know, when we think about the, I guess, the study of fraud and fraud investigation, there's really three prongs and three things or concepts that happen for a fraud to occur. One is pressure. Okay, so what, pre and that says pressure. I don't have the best handwriting. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> um, so one is pressure. And what pressure means is if you think about somebody, a fraudster, and if you, you know, read things in the newspaper, or if there's something has ever happened at your institution, often when you're interviewing the person who has actually committed the crime, they'll say, you know, why did you do it? Oh, because I, you know, I wasn't making enough money and I had, you know, I had so many hospital bills, you know, I have a sick wife or a sick child. And so therefore, you know, I was under this, you know, this pressure to try to help somebody or I had um, accumulated a ton of credit card debt, you know, by accident, you know, and I always thought I'd play catch up, but I, I couldn't. So, you know, I, but I needed to make the credit card bills or else I was going to lose my house. So pressure, that's one thing. Somebody feels a pressure. That, and they don't have the means, so therefore they have to find the means to do something to alleviate that pressure. Rationaliz rationalization is the second. And you're just going to have to believe me that that says rationalization. But um, what happens, what happens um, when people rationalize their behavior? We all do, all of the time, right? But especially, you know, a fraudster. So... My wife, you know, my wife is in the hospital and I have, you know, insurmountable hospital bills. And you know what? I have been at this stinking job for 20 years and I've only gotten one raise. So therefore, they owe me. That I deserve this raise. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to, you know, start paying myself. Okay? I'm going to give myself a raise. Rationalization. Rationalize their behavior. Or, you know what? I do such a great job at work. They should appreciate me more. Rationalization. Okay, the third, the third prong of the, uh, the triangle is opportunity. And opportunity means that, you know, they've, they've, they're under pressure, they've rationalized their behavior, and opportunity is really just that, that we have given them the opportunity to then therefore commit a crime or commit theft or, um, or fraud. And um, this is where research administrators come in. What you can do is really help when it comes to um, trying to reduce the amount of opportunity for somebody who is intending to commit fraud. This is, again, this is where we come in. And that is through, has, has anybody ever worked with your internal audit department at your institution? Have you ever heard something, they talk about internal controls and processes, right? And um, they're not just trying to drive you crazy. <laughs> this is, I mean, one of the reasons to put controls in place is to help, you know, mitigate or reduce that opportunity for something bad to go wrong.